All right, I'm currently running a game of uh, MMP's uh, None But Heroes, actually. Published by MMP, but originally The Gamers, which is owned by MMP. But uh, This is from their Line of Battle series, which also, to this point, includes Last Chance for Victory, which is on Gettysburg, and currently has on MMP's P500, or more like P550 list, um, uh, to take Washington, which is on the Battle of Monocacy, which hopefully um, anyone watching this video will go and pre-order so that we can get it, and more importantly, get to Dean Essig's next title in the line of battle series after Monocacy, which is on the Wilderness, which is probably my most anticipated tactical level game of all time. Anyway, I am running the full battle of Antietam here with None But Heroes which started, the game turn started at 5.45 in the morning. I've just finished the Union half of the 6.30 turn. And it's, I don't know, with these tactical games, I'll usually play through, you know, maybe halfway. <laughs> so, I, I, you know, I was playing a, a, a uh, April's Harvest, which is the Civil War Brigade series uh, Battle of Shiloh, and as with any time I've played the Civil War Brigade series, I don't make it very far because the turns are so long. You know, each combat um, on each between each unit, each fire action between each unit or each assault action between each unit involves like six different die rolls. So just it's a very it's a very kind of cumbersome <laughs> system to to play. I love it, but I can never get very far in it. Uh, at least not solo. Um, so this and this is kind of the same case with any of these big games where I'll get them out, set them up, maybe run through, maybe even do some video, and then uh, never actually finish. So that's probably what'll happen here. But I thought I'd do a couple of videos um, recapping some of the turns, just because one of the great things that these games do is create this this narrative. Um, here at Antietam, at the beginning, you've got Joe Hooker's First Corps on the map already they start all up here you can see hooker himself his headquarters is here um, up by the north woods they start up here um, you can start with the written orders in the game or you can use a special rule that you can rewrite hooker's orders and if you do that then you get to have the 12th core which is just now coming onto the map instantly accept another set of orders that you write so uh, in this case historically hooker attacked along the Hagerstown Pike, which is this white line here. And uh, here's the, the famous Miller's Cornfield, um, one of the more violent spots of the entire battlefield the whole day. Um, he, he historically attacked along the Hagerstown Pike with a large focus through the cornfield here. The problem with this is that I believe it's limited to like six hexes which uh, uh, um, east, or rather, rather west of the Hagerstown Pike, which doesn't allow him to hit Nicodemus Hill. And historically, Confederates had artillery here on Nicodemus Hill that could hit Union troops as they marched on the cornfield. And um, that, that I saw that as a problem. Um, I didn't want to just let this artillery sit over here and take pot shots. Um, so I sent over Doubleday's 1st Division of the 1st Corps, which includes the Iron Brigade. You can see them there. I think there's more of them up here, currently bloodlusted at the top of the hill. Um, I sent them over there to drive the artillery off. Um, Fitz Lee's Cavalry Brigade was over here, and the early Confederate orders um, assign Early's Brigade to, um, or Early's Division, uh, to, to come over here and assist or, or attach themselves to Fitz Lee's command, um, who's actually part of Stuart's cavalry, who is off the map here. You can see is there. Stuart's HQ got displaced by, yes, you can see there's Union troops way here on the other side of the hill. These guys started back here, charged through, um, routed this artillery back here, I think they're routed. Oops, they should be routed. Um, I don't know where I put the, those guys ended up getting routed and uh, nearly destroyed. And 
Stuart's Cavalry Division HQ was either here or here in one of these, these hexes. And so these guys were able to enter um, Stuart's hex and that displaced him back here to Fitz Lee's HQ. And when that happens, that command is going to have to skedaddle next turn. And unfortunately for early and for Fitz Lee's Cav, which is down here, um, these guys are all attached to Stuart's command. So they're all going to have to displace and I will probably end up just giving up this kind of flank and probably put him back here um, on this little hill in this little woods here um, along Hauser's Ridge. Uh, they just early just didn't get there in time and then I got some really bad rolls for the Confederate uh, morale checks. Um, artillery is never going to stand up particularly well morale wise to infantry. Um, especially if the infantry is charging at them, uh, it's going to be, and it didn't help that these guys ran out of canister. Uh, so they didn't get that, you know, powerful uh, two column shift from dense canister fire. Cause I think they were, are these guys dense? Either get a one column or two column shift for normal or dense canister. I think those guys might be normal. Regardless, you get shifts, uh, which really helps artillery and the iron brigade back here really got the crap beat out of them. Um, approaching not this stack, it's this stack here. I think half of the 6th Wisconsin is gone. Yeah, they were a 6. And the 2nd Wisconsin is wrecked. So these guys just took the brunt of canister charging up the hill. Um, and you can tell by the fact that these guys are out of canister means they rolled like a 12 or something on the on their roll, which is going to inflict at least two losses. Um, so it, it's tough to charge with guns, but when you get there, uh, when you hit them, they're going to have a lot of, a lot of modifiers, uh, that are going to hurt, especially if they're being charged by a large stack of infantry. Um, they're going to get a modifier just for being artillery. So it's usually not great. Um, if the infantry can reach your artillery, the, the goal is keeping them from reaching it. Um, but I did move in early has two fairly large stacks of troops here that I counterattacked with um, that pushed these guys back. As you can see, they're shaken. Um, I should probably, while I'm on the Union turn here, I need to move Doubleday there just in case these guys charge and displace. So I don't want Doubleday to get captured. Uh, this cab over here, I'm not, I'm not sure about. There should be, these guys are blank on the back and they're mounted on this side. So I don't know if they can't dismount or what. I, I couldn't find any dismounted counters for him, so it's very strange. I'm not used to using cavalry in a ACW game anyway. They're virtually useless. These guys here shot at a stack that was right here and um, basically destroyed them. That, they got another bad morale roll, though. But Cav gets has morale negatives, too. So um, over here in the cornfield, I did kind of a a staggered attack by brigade. Um, and so this, this first brigade that launched here was the Pennsylvania Reserve Brigade. And then um, this is McGilton's or Magilton's, um, uh, more Pennsylvania Reserves, the second brigade of the third division um, of the first corps. These guys are all, let's see. And things got kind of split up because somehow my second division commander, Ricketts here, he ended up the second division, uh, third brigade, second division ended up. That was three, two, one. Yeah, <laughs> the rest of them are over here. I don't know what the hell. I don't know what the hell happened. Hartsuf is the the brigade commander for the third brigade, um, and he's the second division commander. And so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what happened. This is the kind of chaos that happens on the battlefield, but he's, I think the, the brigade commander is six, the range is six. Uh, he may just be able to be directly commanded by the, by the division commander. Um, yeah, it's a six hex range for brigade commanders. So. I think, yeah, so he's still in range. It, it's just, I, I don't know how he got way over there. 
Um, that was annoying when I found it because there's no there was no good way to unwind it and say, oh, I meant, I meant, maybe I meant to move some other unit because there's no other unit. These guys are pretty big and they're doing their seven strength points and an A morale. And so they're doing pretty good um, kind of shoring up this opening here on the on in the gap here in the Union line between um, Double Day's division, uh, Division's Assault on Nicodemus Hill uh, and, and the main Union Assault along the pike. Uh, I did put some artillery here just in case any Confederates try and come through and exploit that gap. Um, in retrospect, I probably should have moved early through there instead of putting him on Nicodemus Hill because he's not really helping um, too much on the hill given that the artillery has now been displaced. So there's not a whole lot for him to defend there. And he's going to have to skedaddle now next turn, um, thanks to Stuart's command getting overrun. So 12th Division, or 12th uh, Corps is moving on. This is the um, 1st Brigade, 1st Division of the 12th Corps. Uh, Williams is the division commander. It's Crawford's division. Uh, Mansfield is the Corps commander. I'll probably leave his headquarters here. Uh, 12th Corps' orders are to um, assist Hooker's attack uh, by attacking the Confederate position um, at Miller's Cornfield and the Dunkard Church. And their ultimate orders are to seize the Dunkard Church and surrounding hills um, from the Confederates. So Hooker's orders are to do that along the Hagerstown Pike. And 12th Corps is to assist that assault along the Smoketown Road, which comes in up here. Um, so I'll put, I'll have the, the 12th Corps form up in the East Woods here and prepare to hit this Confederate position. Um, Jackson has given himself orders. Uh, I, I, I didn't want to just leave them at, uh, you know, doing a, a no orders defense um, because I wanted the ability to move up and exploit this Union opening on the flank here, which they did. Uh, Jackson moved his troops up through the West Woods and counterattacked pretty heavily. You can see some Union stacks here. Counterattacked pretty heavily um, and, and punched the unions pretty hard, Union pretty hard. Wouldn't have been able to do that, though, if I hadn't given him attack orders. So, yeah, and this scenario or in this battle, um, the, the Confederate commanders Jackson and Longstreet can issue orders to themselves, so they can use their initiative to issue orders to their subordinates um, and to any other division. So there's no real Confederate court structure at Antietam, and that gives Jackson and Longstreet and Lee uh, great leeway in, in assigning orders to whomever they wish. So Jackson gave orders to his command himself um, to counterattack and clear the Union uh, position out of Miller's cornfield. He's issued orders to Hood down here, sitting in the Westwoods, which Hood will receive at 7 a.m. Um, and probably accept immediately because he's got a four uh, command value. And so he will be counterattacking through the cornfield um, in, in the event that these Confederate troops here start to break. Um, losses, the Confederates have taken a lot it's kind of stacking them up here. Uh, you can see there's a bit of artillery in there, some open order units, a little cav, stuff from Nicodemus Hill. Um, so not great. You can see most of these are pretty small units though, compared to only two units lost um, for the Union. So a pretty tough morning for the Confederates, but I think they have the strength to counterattack the Union pretty hard, so um, we'll, we shall see what happens next.